the Lord be with you. I'm going to make sure. Are you able to hear me okay? Is that coming through? We're having some difficulty with the sound booth. I know he's working on it. I'll wait for him to figure it out. So in the meantime, I'll just talk as loud as I can until we get the mics figured out. Are you working on that? Are you, is it back there? All right, all right. It, the amps. Okay, yeah, if you turn those on, that'll help. There are multiple buttons you have to turn on every time, and if you miss one, you don't get power. So give me just a second and see if he finds it. Oh, there. All right, now you can hear me. Wonderful. Uh, welcome to Zion. Today is an exciting day as we celebrate confirmation. We have 10 confirmands today, and I'm going to go out and process in with them in just a moment. Their names are printed for you in the worship folder in the insert, so if you want to take note of that, I encourage you to do that. I encourage you afterwards to greet them and to congratulate them. Uh, also, just a reminder that everything uh, that you need to know coming up in the life of Zion, all printed in your worship folder. Take time to look over that, be involved in the life of Zion. That is there. Welcome to all friends and family who are here to celebrate today. We're excited to celebrate with you. I love confirmation. I love teaching these kids, spending time with these kids. They're a lot of fun. Uh, they're inquisitive. They ask gr just great questions, and they're good learners and good hearers. So thank you, parents and grandparents and all who have walked this journey with them and who will continue to walk this journey with them as we continue to walk in faith and confess Christ as Lord and Savior. Okay, those announcements are there. I have one other item simply just as a maybe historical note, and some of you will have been around, but you see our altar in the front. On March 30th, marked the 50th anniversary of that altar. If you recall, when they built the church, there was a smaller altar present, and this was installed in 19, was it, what did I think it was, 72. Okay, and that, and that was on Confirmation Sunday is why I bring it up, because that was the first time it was used on Confirmation Sunday 50 years ago. So it's neat that we're, uh, we're celebrating that 50th anniversary, and we'll do that also during our celebration today. So I'm going to head back and join our confirmands, and then we'll walk into our opening hymn in just a moment. When we begin to sing, I'll have you stand after the introduction of the hymn, and I'll have you turn and face the cross. We go ahead and begin with our hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 5. We begin with verse number 12. Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles, and they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared join them, but the people held them in high esteem. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that e they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats that, pe that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. But the high priest rose up, and all who were with him, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and began to teach. Now, when the high priest came and those who were with him, they called together the council and all the senate of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came, they did not find them in the prison, so they returned and reported. They found the prison securely locked and the guards standing at the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these words, they were greatly perplexed about them, wondering what this would come to. And someone came and told them, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain with the officers went and brought them, but not by force, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest questioned them, saying, We strictly charged you not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. And Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Revelation chapter 1. We begin with verse number 4. John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is 
and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of kings on earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all tribes of the earth will wail on account of him, even so. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Jesus, was on the island called Patmos on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, Write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus and to Smyrna and to Pergamum and to Thyatira and to Sardis and Philadelphia and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands one like a son of man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were like white wool, as white as snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze refined in a furnace. And his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars. From his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. And his face was like the sun shining in full strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last, the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys to death and Hades. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand, and we sing together. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. We begin with verse 19. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord! But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, and yet have believed. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, 
and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Kids, stay put today. I want you to pay a special close attention when we do our confirmation right, because I want you to look forward to the day when you will have the privilege of standing here and making this bold confession. We'll have more to say about that, that then, but our confirmands, they'll be our children's sermon, if you will, for today. Let's turn to our next hymn. Grace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God speaks to us this morning through our gospel reading from John chapter 20. And confirmands, I want to speak directly to you this morning. I'm speaking to all of us, but confirmands, I want you to listen intently and drink in the words that God will bring into your ears this morning. My sincere prayer is that God would take these words and plant them deep in your hearts and that by the working of His Spirit through His Word, He will produce and strengthen faith in Christ that will guide you and drive you and shape you your entire life. And I want you to know I speak those words also on the behalf of the two people sitting behind you right there. Pastor and Tiffany, you echo those words. This is their prayer for you. This is our prayer for you. Now, for the sake of time, we're going to zero in on two verses from John chapter 20. Hear them again. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Now let's consider them piece by piece. John writes, now Jesus. Okay, we're going to 
park right there for a few minutes because we need to appreciate this Jesus. Because when people hear the name Jesus, they actually think all sorts of things. Muslims think Jesus was a great prophet, but not the Son of God. Jehovah's Witnesses think Jesus was created by the Father. Mormons think Jesus was one of billions of spirit babies born to a heavenly father and heavenly mother. Hindus think Jesus was an enlightened example to follow, but not a member of the triune God. And many nominal Christians think that Jesus was all about affirming love and nothing about eternal truth. And we could go on. Our point is that we cannot assume we're talking about the same Jesus. We must let Scripture reveal his identity. So we listen to the Word and not the world. This is why it's so important to be a careful and thoughtful hearer of the Word. Because the Word tells us who Jesus is. So what does John, the Gospel writer, tell us about Jesus? We're going to limit ourselves just to John's Gospel for right now. What is John? Just one Gospel in the Bible. What does John have to say about Jesus? I want you to listen quickly because I'm going to move, or listen carefully, because I'm going to move pretty quickly through this, all right? So track with me. John tells us that Jesus is the eternal Word of God in flesh to dwell among us. He is the Lamb of God, the Son of God, the King of Israel, the Messiah, the temple of God, where God dwells, the one lifted up for the salvation of the world, the source of living water that wells up to eternal life, the one to whom the Scriptures point, the Spirit giver, the one who gives eternal life, who is one with the Father, the one who glorifies the Father, the one who establishes the office of the ministry for His church so this church can hear the Word and receive the sacraments. This is the Jesus who turns water into wine, heals the sick, makes the lame walk, miraculously feeds the 5,000, opens the eyes of the blind, and raises Lazarus. And in John's gospel, Jesus makes astonishing claims about himself, saying, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine that connects people to the Father. And that's only John's gospel. So when John writes, now Jesus... He's writing about something and someone significant. The name Jesus meant something to him. And if we are to confess Jesus, it must mean the same to us. Okay, John goes on. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. Signs. Signs are a big deal for John, these are not the things that we are to seek after to discern the will of God, which we shouldn't be doing because God's will is revealed for us in Scripture. We've talked about this before. But Jesus did these signs to tell us something significant about Him, about His identity. These signs pointed to something about Jesus. Now, John records several signs in his book, and we've already made reference to them, but I want to very quickly help us to see what those signs pointed to. Now, each sign is worthy of its own sermon and own deep study, but you all want to be out of here before supper, so I'm going to have to be brief. Jesus turned water into amazing wine, the best wine. And the prophet Isaiah tells us that the Messianic kingdom would have great wine. So his sign shows us that Jesus is the Messiah who brings God's kingdom of joy. Jesus healed a sick boy with a word. So his sign shows us that he truly is the Son of God whose word has authority 
and power. Jesus made a lame man walk on the Sabbath, so a sign shows us that he is the Lord of the Sabbath, the one who gives wholeness and life. Jesus multiplied the loaves and fed the multitude of people. So his sign shows us that he is the bread of life that has come down from heaven through which we receive everlasting life. Jesus healed a blind man even as he opened his eyes of faith. So his sign shows us that he is the light of the world who opens the eyes of the spiritually blind. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. So his sign shows us that he is sovereign over death. And Jesus rose from the dead, vindicating everything he said and did, putting this capstone on all the signs he had previously done, showing that they all point to him as the eternal, incarnate, reigning, returning Son of God. But look at what John says. Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. I mean, these are only the ones that John wrote down. There were many more. But I want you to see why he wrote them down. These are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in His name. These are written. These are specifically chosen. They are intentionally recorded so that those who did not see in touch, like Thomas and the other disciples did, which we just read about. Okay. By the way, Do you know why they got to see and touch? So they would stake their lives on confessing the resurrected Christ and ensure that it was recorded in a book for you so that you could see through their eyes and touch through their fingers so that you could have all the confidence that they had that Jesus Christ was physically bodily resurrected from the dead so that you could have all the confidence that they had that his words and all his signs they all pointed to him as the Messiah and Redeemer of the world so that you would have all the confidence that they had to confess him as they confessed him even if it costs you your life that you could stand before this church and say, I will confess Christ with my whole being. And nothing will deter me, not even death. That's what we're doing today. We're saying they staked their life on this confession because they saw and touched the risen Lord. I have the same confidence and I will stake my life on it too. These are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Life. Life now and life forever. Life filled with joy, with meaning, with confidence and hope. Life filled with purpose and significance. I'm not talking about living radical lives for Jesus. I don't even know what that means. I'm talking about the life you're living right now with all of its messiness and its complexities, with all of its good and its bad. I'm talking about life in your family, life in your school, in your community. This life, this is the life that Jesus feels fills with meaning and purpose and significance. And no, he doesn't promise to make it easy or even happy all the time, but he promises to indwell you with his Holy Spirit and to walk with you every day. Every day. You see, the saving gospel of Jesus, it doesn't make us spiritual superheroes filled with some spiritual superpower so that everything is awesome all the time. 
The saving gospel of Jesus liberates us from death, from Satan's accusations, from guilt, from the need to justify our, our existence, to prove that we're cool or smart or capable. It sets us free to be the children of God in the place and among the people where God has placed us. It is absolutely liberating. It doesn't set us free to live sinful lives. It doesn't set us free to indulge whatever desires we have on the inside. That is the lie the world tells us about Jesus. But remember, we listen to the Word. The Gospel sets us free and places us in our life stations, brothers, sisters, classmates, teammates, co-workers, families, neighbors, parents. The gospel places us as forgiven, liberated, and alive people in these stations and allows us to affirm what Scripture says about them. These are good. These are beautiful. These are how you glorify God and live significant lives. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to impress God by being better than your neighbor. You get to live free as God's redeemed. And you get to live forever. Forever. That means death doesn't win. That's so important. Now I know that for some of you, death may seem like a far off thing. But for others of you, you know how suddenly death can butt in. And it stinks. But here in the gospel of Jesus, we have the amazing assurance that death doesn't win. As quickly as it has butted in, it will be booted out. And we know this. Because we have certainty in the risen and returning Jesus. We have life, life now, and life forever in Jesus. Confirmance. Treasure what has been written for you. Hear it. Read it. Study it. Sing it. Echo it, love it, because it has been written for you that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. In Jesus' name, amen. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord to life everlasting. Amen. Okay, Compromands, come on up here. You can go on each side. You can come join me at the altar. I'm going to give you each one of these. Okay, Girls, you go that way. Boys, you go that way. How about that? Oh, come back over. Don't go so far. Start right here. There you go. There you go. Or two there, I think. Or three. Two? Perfect. There you go. There you go. All right. There you go. Okay. Now, young children present, I want you to pay very special attention to what they're doing because this is what we call a big deal. They're making some really big promises today. And I want you to listen carefully to the big promises. Adults who are here, those who have been confirmed in Christ, be reminded of your confirmation vows and what they mean. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You have been baptized, 
and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day, in congregation, you're going to answer with the confirmands on these questions. Do you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Now, confirmands, I ask you these questions, and you speak them together. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? I do. Do you confess the doctrine, that is the teaching, of the evangelical, that word means gospel, the evangelical Lutheran church drawn from the scriptures as you have learned to know it from the small catechism to be faithful and true? I do. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? I do by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the word of God? and in faith, word, and deed, to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death, I do by the grace of God. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? I do by the grace of God. We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You've confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, confirmands, I'll be coming to you individually and sharing your confirmation verse and certificate. And when I come to you, uh, you will kneel and receive the Lord's blessing. They're in alphabetical order, so Camden, you're up first. Camden Alexander, kneel. You chose Revelation chapter 2, verse 10 as your confirmation verse, which reads this. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Camden, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. For you, Camden, you may stand. Congratulations, Camden. Carly, please kneel. You chose Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song and he has become my salvation. Carly, that word salvation is a neat one in Hebrew. It's the word Yeshua, which is the word for Jesus. He's become your Jesus. Jesus is your salvation. Carly, the almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, has forgiven you all your sins, strengthening with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Congratulations, Carly. McKenna. 
Your confirmation verse from Psalm 16, verse 8. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Those are wonderful words, McKenna. Never forget your Lord is with you. McKenna, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Congratulations, McKenna. Nathaniel, you chose Romans chapter 8, 38 and, 30, no, 38 and 39. These words, <clears throat> for I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing, nothing can separate you from your Lord's love in Jesus. Nathaniel, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting. Amen. Congratulations, Nathaniel. Samantha. You can kneel. Your chosen verses from Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle's. Bless the Lord, Sam. Bless the Lord. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting. Amen. Congratulations, Sam. Haley. Your confirmation verse, the first section from Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. This is the Lord's promise. In life, we will go through hard things. But your Lord is with you, and he will never forsake you. Haley, the almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Congratulations, Haley. Hayden, your chosen confirmation verse from Psalm 25. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. I love those words. We ask the Lord to teach us. We ask the Lord to lead us. And he does. He does in his word, Hayden. Hayden, the almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Congratulations, Hayden. Camden Morris. Your chosen confirmation verse, Jesus says in John chapter 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. He is your light. He is your life, Camden. Follow him. He will lead well into eternal life. Camden, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Congratulations, Camden. Ben, your chosen confirmation verse from Mark chapter 9, Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible for one who believes. 
This is a strong promise. And your faith in your Lord Jesus is a strong faith. But always remember, he keeps his promises. He is a good God who loves you, Ben. He keeps his promises. Ben, the almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Congratulations, Ben. And Jack, your chosen confirmation verse from James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. I'm looking forward to the crown, to seeing you wear it, and you, and you, and you, and you. This is God's promise. But there's also a call to be steadfast, unmovable. And I know you're the man for that job. You have a strong faith, young man. Jack, the almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthening you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Jack, congratulations. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and most merciful Father, in the waters of holy baptism you have united your children in the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, cleansing them by his blood. Renew in them the gift of your Holy Spirit, that they may live in daily contrition and repentance with the faith that ever clings to their Savior. Deliver them from the power of Satan and preserve them from false and dangerous doctrines, that they may remain faithful in hearing Christ's word and receiving his body and blood. By the Lord's Supper, strengthen them to believe that no one can make satisfaction for sin but Christ alone. Enable them to find joy and comfort only in him, learning from this sacrament to love you and their neighbor and to bear the cross with patience and joy to the day of the resurrection of their bodies to life immortal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Confirmants, can you turn and face the congregation? Congregations, can you show your... your congratulations? They are eager to greet you after worship with happy smiles and firm handshakes. And so they will greet you after worship. You guys may head back to your seats. And as we do that, we will gather our offering. Kids, you can bring your offering forward. Choir invites you forward.
we stand to pray. Lord, we give you thanks that in the scriptures we have the written word of those who saw and touched and knew the risen Lord Jesus. And they were willing to stake their lives on that confession and to ensure that it was written down for us that we may hear and see and believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, have life in his name. By your Spirit, create and strengthen faith in us that would confess you with our whole being until the day you call us to be in your presence to await the resurrection. We pray your blessing upon our confirmants, Haley, Hayden, Camden, Ben, Jack, Camden, Carly, McKenna, Nathaniel, Samantha. May they confess Christ their entire lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in need of your care. We name them in our hearts and we see their names in our bulletin. We pray that you would give them grace for each day and the healing you have in store for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for our pastors and missionaries and cross-cultural worker. Enable them to confess Christ. Allow them to direct people to what has been written for their life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For law enforcement and military men and women, protect them from harm and allow them to serve with integrity and honor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our preschool, that it may be strengthened, that Jesus' love may be known. For our partnership with Trinity, that it also may be strengthened that through the sharing of Christ, the gospel of the kingdom may go forward and reach more hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the people of Ukraine, we pray for the cessation of war. We pray for discernment for world leaders. We pray that you would work through your church to bring mercy and ultimately open doors for the gospel of eternal life. These prayers we are bold to bring before you in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen and returning Lord. Amen. We joyfully continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is fitting and right so to do. It is truly fitting, right, and beneficial that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, and most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. And therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing together. We pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
We're going to continue with the benediction. I invite you to stand. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We turn to our final song.